Hello Ratbags, it's Jade. Welcome to an Atlas video, everything you need to know about playing the game. Despite its troubles and the issues it's had in the last year since it went into early access on Steam, Atlas could do very well on console because there really just isn't enough of these games out there. It has received some decent updates in that time trying to improve, fix and basically make Atlas an enjoyable pirating game. But it's not my job to convince you or praise the sun out of it or necessarily crap all over it. I'm just going to show you what you can do with Atlas right now. As ever with all Xbox Game Preview program games, you'll be able to try this for one hour for free. So you've got nothing to lose, nothing stopping you from jumping in and trying it out for yourself. So when you join online, as well as there being the typical official servers, you'll also have a bunch of unofficial servers and remember it's crossplay with Steam. And yes, if you're an Xbox fan and you've rented out servers for Ark Survival Evolved, you will be able to rent out servers for Atlas 2. I'll talk a lot more about this when I do a review of the servers. So that's unofficial. Then you've got non-dedicated sessions, which is you and up to seven more of your friends, so eight players max playing on the game together. They'll join you and there'll be a tether connecting you to your friends, just like it is for Ark. If you log off the computer, if you log off your Xbox, then your friends will also be logging off and won't be able to play. The only way to do that is by using one of them rentable servers I mentioned earlier. And then you've got official servers, which there are currently four. They have one server live at the moment on PC, with three more being added with the launch of the Xbox version. Two PvP servers, so player versus player, two player versus environment with Europe and North America both having PvP and PvE servers. The servers, the three that have been added will be freshly wiped so everyone will have a fair chance on them servers. You may be wondering why they decided to leave one server up. Well of course with the crossplay with Steam they really don't want to leave players just hanging around not being able to play the game. So they initially just wiped this on Steam right now like a week ago. So although players will have a bit more of an advantage on player versus player server in North America, not by much. And there really isn't that many people playing it on Steam to give a huge advantage. So don't worry if you're in North America, you can simply join PvP. The world, the maps are pretty big and you'll find a spot that hasn't been overrun for sure. Let's jump into one of the official servers just to see what it's like. The map has had a huge revamp. There are now 70 different island templates. Each of these islands will also have maybe possibly different biomes. So lots of different resources on all of them. What you'll notice are these regions that you can basically choose to start from. Each square that has the blue home symbol, that is basically where you're gonna spawn into a free port. There you'll be able to level up to a certain level that gets cap locked, get experience with the game, and hopefully try and get enough gold to buy yourself a raft or a sloop. And pretty much around it, you'll have a lawless region. This is where full PvP contact will begin. Of course, on PvE servers, you don't ever have to worry. But on PvP, you can be attacked as soon as you leave the home grid. There's quite a few different ones to choose from. I'll take another more in-depth look at the biomes. But obviously, if you're spawning up north, it's going to be a little bit colder. Likewise, the south of the pole. And in the middle, it's mostly going to be a little bit warmer and hotter. Let's jump on Southwest Temperate Freeport. You can see each grid has, you can see each single one of these, which is basically the same sort of size server as Ark, holds up to 150 players. So there really is room for 40,000 people to be able to play on Atlas. When you've chosen what one you want, just simply press the B back button, and then you'll be able to join the server or add it to favorites. So character creation, just like Ark Survival Evolved, you can indeed make yourself a monstrosity of a person. Male, female, you know the drill. One interesting aspect is you can add tattoos. Now these take quite a bit of practice as it's completely freehand, but again, if you've played Ark Survival Evolved, you'll know how to do this by body painting just like you used to on dinosaurs or yourself. It's pretty much the same thing, except you can now do it at the creation screen with your character. Choose your name, and once you've done that, you'll get a chance to spawn on any one of these regions. It doesn't matter which, they'll all be quite friendly. So once you've spawned in, you of course can get started straight away. Now this isn't really a tutorial on how to play. It's more or less just giving you some top tips and starter points for you to explore. Free ports are areas where you can obviously go around and just get used to the game without worrying too much about being killed. But you can't dilly-dally around here too often, especially when you get yourself a ship. 
Any boats or ships parked in these waters, especially if they're anchored, will have more damage able to be done to them. And likewise, it's just not a good idea to use this as a docking area. So if you thought you could game the system somehow on PvP to attack players and then just come hide at Freeport, you're greatly mistaken. But anyway, once you're here, do the usual, gather resources, go and find some wood to punch. Maybe punch a few cows. This is Ark Survival Evolved in the early stages. You are still going to be doing some grinding, although the game has gone to some lengths to reduce that over the last year. Atlas is not Sea of Thieves. You are not going to be running around in the galley and controlling it on your own. Within the space of a few hours, it's meant to be a living, breathing MMO world. That means that sometimes you're going to have to pair up with other players and not necessarily be able to do everything on your own. We will talk about single player in a minute as well and I'll show you the options that you can have for that. As usual, you've got a stamina bar, you've got food, water, weight, XP and health. You can see all of them on the right hand side as well as Tulpa. So exactly the same system as Ark. If you've never played Ark Survival Evolved, a brief breakdown. You've got slots for all of your body, head, torso, legs, feet, off hand and hands. So you can basically equip different pieces of armor as well as a shield and various other items. You can put stats into your health, your food, your oxygen, your weight, intelligence, fortitude, water and stamina to increase them. But they've taken away the ability to put points into speed. The skill system definitely requires a lot of explaining. But before I go any further, I'm just going to point you guys out to something probably the best feature they've added in the last updates. Tutorials. This is pretty much reducing a lot of YouTubers' videos to absolute worthlessness. And I'm pretty pleased, to be honest. This is something you normally expect in big Ubisoft games or AAAs, where they often show you the basics of the game. Think of like how to do combos in God of War, or like I said, the various Assassin's Creed games where they often show you little video vignettes of how to access or how to perform certain actions. The biggest criticism of Atlas was it didn't help players enough in explaining what the systems and what was at play. They've really gone out of their way to help create these little tiny videos and explanations of exactly what is going on. So it really will be putting some YouTubers out of business. Hopefully this means we're going to see even more unique content from YouTubers. So if you're ever stuck, you're ever lost, don't automatically go and look it up like you used to with Ark. Take a look at the tutorials and see if it's there to show you how to do stuff. Of course, watch my videos because my videos are going to be very special. But honestly, I think this is a great idea. It's exactly what this type of game needs. Full, in-depth little mini guides. So, I don't really need to explain how to gather, how to get XP, etc. It will all be there in the tutorials. There are just some interesting things though. Take notice of signs to get water. Talk to NPCs and see what they offer. This is an NPC merchant. You can use gold coins to buy one. You can also get respect potion here too for 250 gold coins. So if you do kind of make a mistake with your build, don't worry you'll be able to rectify it by doing that. These beautiful, wonderful buildings are unfortunately not habitable. They're just there as props. If you dig around though, you will find some food to eat. Just at a bit of a push if you haven't managed to kill any of the wildlife that's around. And one of the latest, newest additions are the cats. Top tip, these are really good for getting chitin. As long as you uh, can not scare one enough. As soon as you get enough points to level up, put it into whatever stat you want. I would strongly suggest stamina on myself and then go ahead and put a point into survivalism. For sure, make sure you put a point into the basics. So every time you get your attribute, make sure you actually level up so that you can then choose what skill you want. Construction merchantilism, so that you can build yourself a base. And then if you look up top, now we've unlocked that, it also unlocks one of these. You'll often find the way to unlock these skills up here sometimes will mean that you have to go through and unlock some of these skills first. So you can see unlocks medicine there. I'm going to need two points plus water keeper one point and obviously the point I just put into there before it opens this up fully for me to start leveling up even more. You are not going to be able to unlock every single skill point. That's why it's important to form a company which is pretty much the clans or the tribes. However, obviously now you can respec pretty easily with a potion. You can certainly try certain things out and see which one works for you. So once you've done that and leveled up, this is the crafting tab where you'll find anything that you can actually craft. If you're having trouble seeing what items you can craft because it's not telling you what resources are needed, 
It's a bit obvious, but make sure you've ticked toggle tooltips on. That way, when you hover over something, it'll tell you exactly what you need. Again, I don't really want to keep saying Ark Survival Evolved, but naturally, this does use a lot of the same systems as the game started out life as an Ark mod, or at the very least, using the same Ark engine. So the usual stuff applies. Pressing the B or back button will give you your inventory. RT and LT will put you into a combat stance. To exit out of it, just press the B button again. You'll notice sometimes that you can't access or do certain things. Or well, it seems like you're always rushing around in this mode. Just make sure, like I said, you have taken it off combat stance. Atlas has a bunch of different skills and unique powers that you can use and unlock as you progress. Some of the more basic stuff is putting a flag down to claim a certain area or region. This is how you're going to set up your land. Now this requires much more detail. I have done videos on this in the past, but I definitely want to do some new ones. But you can clearly see, hold RB and press the left D-pad and you'll be able to place your claim flag once you get out to a certain area. You'll find more information in the tutorials in-game. And if you've ever wanted to do a little bit of a jig and a dance, you've got your emotes or your dances that you can do there. They do actually have a purpose, they're not just there for cosmetic purposes. If you hold the select or home button, it gives you the option to chat, toggle third person, orbit cam, HUD, names and ordering of your tame groups. You're not going to need these for a while, but it's good to know what these do. If you hold the B button, it gives you the option to whistle if you've got any tames. So you can direct your creatures to either attack, or follow or stop. You can have a little poopies if you really want one. Emotes, which range from hiding and showing your hat to saying sorry. You can also press the X button to put yourself in the combat stance as well. There are so many different types of resources in Atlas. It's definitely one of the selling points of the game. Some resources you're going to have to go far and wide to get hold of. And lots of components, especially when you're building higher quality items, are going to need two of the same resource, but different varieties. So you've basically got various types of fiber. You can have various types of different thatch, as well as gems and even wood. This is how you make higher quality items. Use the Y button to gather any items like bushes or stones and make sure you go ahead and craft yourself a pickaxe. Head to the beach to gather yourself some stone if you're finding it hard and in no time all you should be able to start crafting weapons and items. You're aiming to get off here before you get to level 8 as that's when the cap kicks in. You won't be able to earn any more XP or level up anymore on these starter islands. There are cooldowns and certain things you can do with weapons. You basically can't have too many weapons in your hotbar because every time you swap around you'll end up actually having a cooldown to stop you from jumping too much with them. If you press the back button itself just on its own without holding, you'll show up with the map. These pretty much show the free ports in and around the area as well as the grids that are just around you. You can see at the bottom it says what current region you're in, so E12, and what free port you're in. So all four of them islands that you see in E12 are all free ports. It's worth bearing that in mind if you're telling anyone to meet you or come pick you up. Just mention if it's south, east, north or west. As soon as you go out of E12, you should start running into opportunities to take on other players or players that might actually attack you. You can zoom in by pressing the LT button and RT will op open the compass. You can also zoom in by pressing RB if you really want to get a look at the island that you're on. And you can zoom out by holding the L1 or LB button. And that's all the grids that you can see. It's a huge map. Reportedly, it would take you hours and hours to sail from one end to the other. Now, it may be a good idea to think about what creatures you're actually fighting, because even a ball will mess you up. You'll spawn on the home region that you basically spawned at last time, unless you've put a bed down somewhere else. There is death markers so you can go back to your loot and pick up the remains from your body. If it doesn't come up the prompt, just hold the X button while aiming. We'll give it a second and then you should be able to press the Y button. You can quick equip by holding and pressing the RT button. Oh! Oh! Oh, leave me alone mummy! Maybe uh, aim for something that's more your level. 
Also on the free port you'll find a ferryman that can take you to the rest of the islands that are nearby. Just in case you have spawned somewhere where your friends aren't and you want to meet up quickly. And you'll also find this guy is probably the most important. Here you can buy a raft, a dinghy or a sloop. This will just get you from here to go and explore other lands. I totally recommend getting more materials so you can get a sloop. It's worth it in the long run for sure, as the rafts are pretty slow. So you can see how many resources you're going to need. This is why this game is still a grind. So that is pretty much official life. Level up, grindy, grindy, grindy. Get off the free port area and pretty much go and explore and find somewhere to call home after placing a claim flag. You can quickly repair weapons by pressing the D-pad or wherever it's situated quickly, twice, and just go ahead and gather the resources needed to get yourself a sloop. I personally wouldn't worry about food and water too much. You can pretty much just keep dying and going back to your stuff and grabbing it. At this point, it's just going to slow you down worrying about cooking food. But again, that's up to you. You will be able to put a craft fire down. At a push, like I said, go ahead and eat lots of food. Now, there are vitamins in the game. And during early access, they've been much maligned about the way that you have to take and eat certain food groups. It's still not really in sync and definitely needs a lot more work. But the general rule of thumb is this. You're going to need good amounts of vitamin A, B, C and D. Each food source will tell you what kind of vitamin it delivers. So by looking on the right hand side, you can keep a rough track of what's going on with your vitamin intake. So on the player bar here, you can clearly see what's going on with how many ships you've got, your armor level, how good it is at keeping out cold and how good it is about protecting you from heat, where you are and what day the server is. If you're playing with a bunch of friends, you can set up your company here. Once you eventually get some tames, although this game is not ARK, focuses on getting resources enough to go out there on your ships rather than use your creatures. And something very important is your discoveries. Discoveries are pretty much locations and areas you'll come across. So every time you set foot on a new island, that will be a discovery. These discoveries are going to give you XP and that's why it's so important you get a ship as quickly as possible to go out and explore the world. If you have a look on the Atlas tab itself, which is pretty much the map in the game, you can plot out journeys a little bit easier and you can see some of the achievements that you'll get for completing some of these quest logs. If you're having a hard time trying to work out where some of these might be located, well, the game does give you hints on where to go. A big part of Atlas is getting the Power Stones, which you collect by defeating certain enemies at the Golden Compass areas, or the Golden Age Ruins, I should call them. And if you zoom in and just scroll through some of these, you can actually see them appearing on the map. So this one is actually giving you the location of a Fountain of Youth, which you need because you can grow old and die in this game. They've not added it yet, but eventually they want to add that you'll be able to have children and pass on your skills to your children. So familiarise yourself with these, these are pretty much going to give you the focus for the rest of the game, particularly if you're playing single player. You've got various waypoints you can pop down, just clicking on the yellow arrows you'll be able to add one. If you're still a bit confused about what grids will be PvP and which ones won't, if you actually click on the bottom here for info, it gives you a brief breakdown, basically telling you the name of some of the lands, but also more importantly telling you what companies are around you. If it's red that means there are companies settled on these lands so definitely worth soon just spawning in taking a look at this map and deciding what one you're going to go for and whether or not a server has got too much activity you can see i'm at e12 and bearing in mind that these are lawless areas so you can't really put any claims down on some of these you can only do it on these triangular areas next to it so maybe a good bet here would be something like d14 with no enemy clans nearby or inside only in the next grids over. A big part of Atlas is the tax system where you can be taxed. Basically, if you go and harvest resources on some of these lands and you've been, been given permission, anything you gather, 30% of it extra will go towards the people that own the land. It's a system that still needs a lot of work and they've reiterated on it a bunch of times. Scroll down here and you'll pretty much work out each icon does. Turn off the grid so you can take a good proper look at the map and see if there's any ships, etc. A really cool feature I like about Atlas is your torches will be alight while they're on your back. So you don't have to actually go holding them. The thing you want to do before heading off is take a look at the cosmetics vendor. There are absolute ton of cosmetic skins that you can buy with gold. And at the moment, not real money. 
You can see some of them are pretty expensive though. But these will do nothing but just give you cosmetics. There are no in-game extra benefits. So it's well worth coming back here even from time to time on single player just to do something with your gold other than buy NPCs. Now when I said there's nothing here for you to do that affects gameplay, well maybe that was a bit of a wrong one. You can come here to get special boxes or tokens that allow you to tame certain creatures like a cyclops, a drake, fire elemental tame or a rock elemental tame. These are the only ways that you can get these creatures, but it's not as simple as just running up to one of them. You still have to do a lot of damage to the creature so that it's near death before using it. There's various different ship heads to customize and make your ship look however you want it to. Equally, you can make some of your sails look pretty different too. And lastly, there's various different steering wheels that you can have as well. And if you ever want to die in your clothing, this is where you come to. It's pretty cheap to buy some of it. So you do need a lot of hide. It's well worth making sure you've got a skill in spears. You'll find it a lot easier to kill certain creatures by making sure you're using the right weapon. If you're having trouble gathering stuff, do make sure you're out of combat stance. I've lost count of how many times I've said the game is broke and it just happened to be that I hadn't actually come out of it. Also, Atlas has a terrible habit of making you look like you're never getting your stamina back. Make sure you've not pressed the left click in still as it doesn't just revert over time, you've literally got to click it and hold it off so that your stamina will come back. You can turn this off in the settings, but you see that little bottom sign on the right? That's the toggle run state. So if you're having trouble, seem to be running out of stamina all the time, it's likelihood that you've got the run state on. Pretty much go on a massacre of all the local wildlife, get all the resources you need to craft your first sloop. When I mentioned earlier that you'll get different various amounts of rock, or thatch or fiber that also applies to pelts hides and furs pretty much it all falls under the same overhead category so if something needs 50 hide that can be a mix of pelt and fur all in all if you followed my tips and you've pretty much played art before you should be able to get the resources needed to get a sloop within a sort of 25 minutes to half an hour and that's taking a good look at the npcs like i've done and maybe a tiny bit of an explore. If you really rush through it, you could probably get it done in about 15 or 20 minutes. But either way, when you've got enough of the materials, go ahead and craft one up. Now, before you jet off, you may want to go ahead and make some water skins and at least get the ability to craft and make yourself a bed. Do not go out on your ship without a bed or some sort of way to save your progress. You could even go out without any food or water and just rely on respawning on your bed. But remember on official servers there are cooldowns if you die too much too quickly. If you do come across some creatures and they have red writing on them, that means they've been tamed by someone else. And if you really want to wait here and see if they're claimed back, you could go ahead and try stealing them in 7 days, 17 hours, 19 minutes. But it's worth pointing out that this is what the enemy creatures will look like. They'll have red writing on top of them when you're out and about. This uh, needs a little bit of work still, so you may want to go third person if this happens to you or turn off blood overlays in the options. In the options while we're here you can do a bunch of different stuff. Bear in mind that if you do want to hold water you're going to need to unlock the water skins themselves. To fill your water canteens up, stand it in the water up to your waist and then just press RT or R2 just like that. Make sure you've got plenty of meat, but you can obviously put a fire on your boat and start cooking too. And I would say keep a plenty of wood with you too. You want to keep around 200 extra wood just to make any repairs, as well as any fibers or hide. And that is it. You can pretty much set sail on Atlas. So that is it for pretty much part one, how to get going in Atlas. The second part is going to be all about sailing and exploring new lands. Go and check out all my informational videos about Atlas and stay tuned for specific Xbox Atlas videos giving you gameplay and info on the console that you're playing it on. Make sure you're liking it as well and help support the channel. Go and check out all my links for social media, etc, etc. Until next time, Ratbags, laters!